We have to work together to confront bigotry and prejudice wherever they appear. But we'll make no progress and heal no wounds by falsely labeling tens of millions of decent Americans as racist. From day one, I've been fighting for the forgotten men and women of America, and I think we've been doing a great job of it. Uh, we've been doing a lot in many other ways, but uh, it gets lost a little bit sometimes. Bishop, you know that. Yeah. It gets lost. We've done so much, and a lot of the things that we've done that we're very proud of gets lost. Like, we got criminal justice reform passed, and uh, they've been trying to do it for many years, and they haven't been able to get it passed. We secured permanent and record-setting funding for HBCUs, that's historically black colleges and universities. Uh, it's all done. We created tens of thousands of jobs with Opportunity Zones, uh, Tim Scott, and we had a great senator from South Carolina that many of you know, he came with an idea, and I thought it was a great idea, and we got it done. A lot of people said that could never happen, but nobody thought it would be successful like it is. Tens of thousands of jobs and investment in communities where that money wouldn't go. And we achieved the lowest black unemployment in the history of our country prior to the plague coming in from China. And we'll get it back again soon. It'll happen soon. In recent days, there's been vigorous discussion about how to ensure fairness, equality, and justice for all of our people. Unfortunately, there are some trying to stoke division and to push an extreme agenda, which we won't go for, that will produce only more poverty, more crime, more suffering. This includes radical efforts to defund, dismantle, and disband the police. They want to get rid of the police forces. They actually want to get rid of it. And that's what they do, and that's where they'd go. And you know that, because at the top position, there's not going to be much leadership. There's not much leadership left. Instead, we have to go the opposite way. We must invest more energy and resources in police training and recruiting and community engagement. We have to respect our police. We have to take care of our police. They're protecting us. So I'm going to be announcing four steps to build safety and opportunity and dignity. First, we're aggressively pursuing economic development in minority communities. We're doing it very powerfully. We've done it with Opportunity Zones, but we're going to go above that. At the heart of this effort is increasing access to capital for small businesses, and that's with minority owners in black communities. And we're going to get it done, and it should have been done a long time ago. It's been very difficult, very, very difficult for some people. It's been unfairly difficult. Second, we're confronting the healthcare disparities, including addressing chronic conditions and investing substantial sums in minority serving medical institutions. We have medical institutions in some areas of our country that are a disgrace. I was going to say not up to standard. They're much worse than not up to standard. They're a disgrace. Take care of it. Third, we're working to finalize an executive order that will encourage police departments nationwide to meet the most current professional standards for the use of force, including tactics for de-escalation. Also, we'll encourage pilot programs that allow social workers to join certain law enforcement officers so that they work together. We'll take care of our police. We'll take — we're not defunding police. If anything, we're going the other route. We're going to make sure that our police are well-trained, perfectly trained, they have the best equipment. Yeah. Fourth, we're renewing our call on Congress to finally enact school choice now. School choice is a big deal. Because access to education is the civil rights issue of our time, and I've heard that for 
the last, I would say, year, but it really is. It's the civil rights issue of our time. When you can have children go to a school where their parents want them to go, and it creates competition, and other schools fight harder because all of a sudden they say, wow, we're losing it. We have to fight harder. It gets better so many different ways. But there are groups of people against that. You have unions against it. You have others against it. And they're not against it for the right reasons. They're against it for a lot of the wrong reasons. And we're going to get that straight. Every child should be able to grow up in a safe community, free from violence and fear. They've taken a lot of the police protection away in Chicago. And they have great, great police in Chicago. I know Chicago very well, but they're not allowed to do what they can do better than anybody. They could do the job very easily. Americans are good and virtuous people. We have to work together to confront bigotry and prejudice wherever they appear. But we'll make no progress and heal no wounds by falsely labeling tens of millions of decent Americans as racist or bigots. We have to get everybody together. We have to be in the same same path, I think, Pastor. If we don't do that, we have we have problems, and we'll do that. We'll do it. I think we're going to do it very easily. It'll go quickly, and it'll go it'll go very easily.